this is Jessie. And you are listening to Off Her Chops. Off Her Chops. Off Her Chops. Off Her Chops. Welcome, 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 welcome. Voice of an angel. To episode, what are we at? Four. Four. Holy cow. Holy smokes. Thanks for uh, sticking with us all this time. Wow. Four you know, weeks. Yeah. Month in the books. Month. Yeah, I got some feedback on this past episode mm. that it was the people's favorite. Yeah. So far. Look, pork chops have spoken the and they've pork- said, you know what? Ep three, prime. You know, uh, third time's the charm. Hey. Is- oh, and that's what I wanted to tell you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just smack you guys. <laughs> Um, you see, you know how we keep talking about like what's a metaphor and like what's this and that. Yep. And you, I think you keep thinking that when we say those sayings, that's a metaphor. It's not. Right. It's an idiom. An idiom. I D I O M. That's like uh, uh, cheapest chips or oh fruit. yeah yeah good. yeah. It's an idiom. Okay. So now we can reference that. Yep. Uh, it does remind me of idiot. <laughs> um, so. Um, <laughs> I'll have to differ- differentiate, 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 word of the day. Yep. Um, those two, idiom. Okay. Idiom. <laughs> I've already learned something for the day. Yeah. I've been meaning to tell you that. Thank you so much. It's not a metaphor. I still can't grasp what a uh, metaphor is. I am struggling to, I feel like everyone does, let's be honest. If, if you know metaphor, hyperbole, <laughs> bloody verb, noun, pronoun, <laughs> verb. Adjective. adjective, I mean, props to you, but most people, let's... Let's be honest. I know, but we are here to get the brain jiggling. We are. Jiggle that brain. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Jiggle, 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 um, jiggle. So, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Thank you for being here with us this yes. far, Pork Chops. Appreciate it. Producer Snoogs is in the building. He is in the building. Um, this would not happen without Producer Snoog Snoog. Producer Snoog Snoogs with his headphones on, smiling right now. <laughs> we try making him laugh every episode. <laughs> that's always fun. Love you, darling. Uh, um, but, yeah. How have you been? I haven't seen you in, in a whole week. In a whole week? Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, guys, we haven't seen each other in a whole week, but we do oh, text, call, all day, every day. <laughs> FaceTime. It's like multiple each day. Yes. <laughs> it's great. Look, I'm a little bit tired, I'll be honest. Well, that's because you're bloody waking up. It's Barrow's fart. I know, but I've been, I only got seven hours last night. The old, fit, the old Fitbit told me. Oof, that um, is not much. My darling puppy, Latte. Yeah. At Latte, she bit you new guys. <laughs> um, look, she's becoming a. Bloody Instagram star. She's popular, man. Go over and follow her. Hashtag latte. Hashtag Shibunu. <laughs> um, bless her heart. She's five months now. Puppy. Puppy mode. Yeah. And we've had her since she was eight weeks. So we've yeah. had her for quite a long time. Yeah. But we forget how <laughs> young she is. Totally. Still. She's been in the world, you know, smelling air, sniffing the grass. Doing, doing puppy do, stuff. Just doing puppy shit doing for five weeks. Doing dog things. Absolutely. Dog things. Doing dog things. <laughs> <laughs> and she's um lost her first tooth. Yes, okay. The, the top middle one. Oh. She was chewing. I didn't know they lost those ones. Yeah, neither did I. First of all, I'm a first time dog mum. Yep. Uh, no idea that they lost teeth. No idea. Okay. Yeah. Felt like an idiot when I found out. I was like, duh, <laughs> she's a baby. Of course she's going to lose her teeth and grow in her yep. adult teeth. Right. Um, so lost of the front one, she was chewing her little plush dinosaurs. They're so cute. She's got five of them yeah. and she carries them around. And we noticed, Snooks and I noticed that there was blood on one. And I was like, oh. Oh, she's losing her teeth. So we <laughs> propped it up and there was just a little one loose. Um, oh, so that's loose. Did you it was pull loose. It? And then like five minutes later, it was just gone. Oh. But we were told that she like swallows them or she might like, oh. okay. just like they'll come out and we won't really kind of yeah. notice. But bless her heart. She's. Having trouble sleeping the past, I want to say week. She's gone through a sleep regression. She's gone through it. Something's up. And so that's why I haven't been getting much sleep. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm up and down and well, I'll be honest, most of the time I just hit Snuggie <laughs> and say, babe, get her and take her get out. Latte. <laughs> and he does, but it's just, it's been a little bit tough. She's had an upset stomach. Mm. She's been crying a little bit more in her crate. So we're just trying to get her... Um, Resituated, maybe. Okay. Try and get her some new toys. Yeah. She might be in pain because of her teeth. Yeah. Um. So we're just trying to like, just smother her with as much love as possible. No, but nice. uh, yeah, sleep has been on and off this week, and I, I actually started this accountability post. Yeah, I saw. So I've just tried to like try and get back on track, and I'm just aiming for eight hours a night. 
Um, There's only so much you can good. control when you've got a five-year-old pup. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or if you've got kids. Yeah. Or if you've got an, uh, you know, an early start job. Job. Yeah. Or must like, be nice. Work night time. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes. Okay. laughs> must be nice for the people that have the jobs. Props to you guys. <laughs> Getting that career going. <laughs> Getting that check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm just trying to like do the best I can because I have to admit it's been, it's been rough. It's puppies are so stressful. I don't yes. think people really understand how and i always feel like if you and your partner are thinking about starting a family get a puppy yeah because like even the interaction between like couples or whatever it is um like it changes when you have a baby a yeah. puppy you and i feel like a, a puppy is a great little, learning little learning curve, curve. Yeah. yeah yeah and mate you've got three i know i know You're i've got pro. it I've got it down to a fine science you do you have a you got it down i do um but she's in puppy class and it's going good so um just feeling for her a little bit Okay. Um, but yeah, but accountability post, um, I started doing that, I want to say maybe like a couple of weeks ago, um, just to uh, just get back to like my baseline, I thought. Okay. Because I've just been like so out of it since we got released. Yeah. I've, that's how I feel right now too. And, you know, we've had friends go through the same thing yeah. and, and we've like heard uh, what people go through after being released, but obviously we've never experienced it mm-hmm. until now. Yeah. Um, so it's been like six or seven weeks and I, I've just been struggling to keep myself motivated Yeah. to oh, work out yeah. on my schedule and to like eat right. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I think people need to realize like we've been with WWE or we were for six years. Yeah. So that's like six years of, I'm going to say worrying or worrying or just trying to be, to look the best that we can. Yeah. Um, and that. It's a lot of pressure. It pays its toll on your mind. Yeah. So like, you know, now that we, we were like, oh, we don't have to be in a two piece. I don't have to be yeah. on TV. Um, I can order pizza on a Thursday night. Yeah. I can look up Uber Eats and just on a whim order yeah. burgers. Like I, I feel like I've never allowed myself to do that. So yeah. I kind of just like, and is that what ham. you're doing now? Well, I was, yeah, I was going ham, but like, oh, okay. I just, it was making me feel sluggish. Yeah. I was laying on the couch for like the whole day. Yeah. And I was like, as much fun as it is, it's like an instant reward. And then that feeling goes away and then I'm kind of just like in a slump. Yeah. 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 I feel that. So it's just been tough getting back to like a schedule. So the the accountability post was just simple habits that I've always had that I just wanted to get back to. And they're just goals for each day, but they're not like, you know, it's not supposed to be like perfection every day. Okay. Like it's just Just supposed to be just consistent. I mean, there was, I think it was a couple of days ago. I didn't hit my steps and I... What was the other thing? And I didn't hit eight, 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 eight hours of sleep. Yep. That's a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> Seven, eight, five times fast. Eight hours of sleep. Uh, and I didn't hit that. So then, um, you know, I just put a little extra and post it. But then it's just like, these are just things that I'm trying to yeah. just get back to basics with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how, how are you? Because, we, you know, we have spoken about this. It's just, it's so hard to get back on track when you, when you know you've got a time frame where you're at home. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it, it's tough. <sighs> It has been tough, and, and like I texted you about this yesterday, and Ronnie laughs at me when I say, I've been so good for a day, yeah. but I am I feel like, I don't know, I'm either on or I'm off, and that's something that I really wish I had balance on. So last week, I was 100% on. Yeah. I knew I had a photo shoot on the Saturday, yep, and I was, gonna, I was going to get it done, and I wanted to look the best I could, um, and then Saturday night, reward myself with a cheeseburger. Sunday morning pancakes, mm-hmm. Sunday night, I don't know, fried chicken. It goes oh, on and on, you know. Great choices. And then it went on to Monday and then Tuesday. And then we're saying it literally happened all week. And I text you because I could not get my butt in the garage to do my workout. I just had no interest in it. I didn't want to do it. All I wanted to do. And I didn't even want to sit my ass on the couch. Mm. Like I I was just feeling like, oh, I don't know. It was just, yeah, just yeah. a really bad slump. So I'm hoping next week is uh, different, but it's so hard to like, and I say flip the switch to on, which is not what I want to be. I want, I want that balance, but balance, yeah. damn, I struggle with that balance. Yeah. Not flip the switch, maybe just dim the lights. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Turn them on, but we'll just lower them down a bit. Yeah. Just because, and you have to go through those times in life 
where your motivation goes up and down. That's natural. Well, Every and that's the thing as well. Like that. you shouldn't rely on the motivation. So no. it's like, well, I'm supposed to be an elite athlete. So where's my dedication? Yeah. And then I sit here and I start like judging myself because I'm not busting my ass in the gym. And I'm like, for what? What? I don't have to be in a two piece on Monday. Meanwhile, you've been busting your ass for the past six years, just in the States yeah, alone, alone, alone yes. not mentioning Australia before that. So it's like, well, there has to be a time where you give yourself a break. Yeah. And but then you give yourself a break and you feel guilty for, for exactly. it. Oh. And you, you think, oh, I'm, a, I'm a big slob and I'm, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? I'm a, just a monster. <laughs> I, I suck. <laughs> it's hard not to beat yourself up. Yeah. And I think that's what like, you know, body image and body self-esteem, everyone goes through times where they yeah. struggle with that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a constant struggle, I feel like, it for really a lot of people. Is. It really is. And, you know, I, mm. you know, I'll i take it back to before we knew about our trier. Yeah. I had just started um, training. In the gym? Uh, yep. With my my friend, Shauna. Shout out, shout out, Shauna. Sean O'Shea. M- Mad dog. Of, uh, what's his? Uh, performance PT. Performance PT in... Yep. Uh, in uh, Smith Camp- uh, Camp- I was going to say Camden, but no, Smith and Grange, yeah. The Norell and Campbelltown <laughs> MacArthur area of New South Wales. <laughs> of New South Wales. <laughs> I started training... Uh, with him and and I wasn't like tracking food crazy but when we kind of heard whispers of a tryout happening I remember it was like April that we kind of heard whispers that in August they were gonna maybe do something I was like okay let me start on my nutrition and from that point on that was like what probably like seven years ago yeah I've been tracking ever since yeah and I am like you all or nothing. Yeah. Have to be perfectionist or I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it consumed my life. Yeah. And it has to this day. Yeah. Um, tracking and, and all of a sudden food became very like, it was just everything. It yeah. became a big part of my life. Yeah. And I just, I wasn't expecting that flip because I would bloody, before that I would have I, yeah, you Red used, Rooster, fast food before oh, I, gosh, I miss Red Rooster. Before I wrestling show, just pop, you know, and I'd eat whatever I want. But well, I'm, you were so, for as long as I knew you from like high school and then so up until that point where you started tracking, you were just stick thin. Like so, yeah. you, you had that fast metabolism where you could eat a freaking chocolate bar and then go out and wrestle or yeah. Red Rooster, like you're saying. Yeah. And I used to yeah. love it. Um, but that's when I was playing basketball and I was training oh, okay, all the time, six hours a week. And then we were playing games once a week. And so then that's it, on top of wrestling and that's on top of too. wrestling training as well. Yeah. So I were like good metabolism young, mm, yeah. but I was ex- like not yeah. exercising, but I was just active. Yeah. Very active. Cause yeah. I wasn't in the gym. Yeah. Um, so then started tracking for the, for the trier. Um, that's also the year I got uh, married to my snooks. Aww. <laughs> and then um you know we, we make the the trek over to the states to across orlando the globe. across the globe with our two suitcases <laughs> on the plane oh, um just, a suitcase in each seat just holding them ready to go <laughs> just ready bells and whistles, bells and whistles. <laughs> um so we get over here and you know it's Social media, I feel like, was just exploding back yeah. then. Because you've got to think six or seven years ago, Instagram was definitely a thing, but it wasn't like as crazy as it is now. Totally. and But also, you and I both had our accounts on private. So yes. we weren't trying to impress anyone. No. It was f- purely for friends and family. Exactly. I remember I had 112 people. Yeah, I didn't have many. You know? Yeah. And then we come over here and we... We start thinking about, you know, building our own brands and becoming, you know, these superstars and really taking into account our bodies and training really well. Um, And there was ups and downs with that. And I remember it was, I think it was in 2016, I decided to go on this like crazy diet. And it was something that I just came up with. I didn't seek help. It wasn't like a nutritionist gave this to me or or a trainer gave this to me. I just thought, you know what? I want to get in really good shape. I'm going to go 50 days clean, which means... Yeah, what is that? Clean. No treat meals at all. Okay. Um, and I would have four meals a day, and yeah. they were like the same thing every day for So do you days. know like what your calories were at that time? I want to say, I wasn't tracking back then. I was just... Oh, okay. Which is very strange. Yeah. Um, because I was like, well, if I stop tracking, I need to be super consistent. I definitely think I was under eating and over exercising. I want to say 100%. I remember the time. I'm going to say under 1200 calories. Yeah, okay. For 50 days is a long time. I mean, and this wasn't for a show. This isn't like somebody shredding for a specific purpose. This yeah. was just me wanting to get in the shape, but I had no knowledge of how to right. do this properly. So 
I dropped down in that 50 days. I remember it was right before we went away to like the mania weekend. Yep. Well, that was your end goal, right? So that you was could my enjoy end like the mania catering and then yep. you and Snuggy could go out for dinner. Somewhere, yeah. You know? Have, have Spoil a yourself. Slice of, slice of cake and pie. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> cake and a pie. <laughs> cake and a pie. <laughs> And I remember I, I weighed myself right before we left. Yeah. And I was 124 pounds. Okay. And I'm 5'8", guys. Yep. So, and there is a picture on my Instagram. I'm just like a stick. Yeah. I, I mean. No butt. Yeah. Nothing. Just a stick. I, I mean, and at the time as well, just because I knew growing up with you, you're always very thin. But when I look back, I was like, oh, damn, I wish I was like, I wish I realized at the time. But you were also so tunnel vision. Yeah. There's nothing I could have said, I feel like. To take me out of it. No. I was just like so into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so then after that, I was actually like injured just for like, I want to say like a month or two. Yeah. Um, right after that. And I was just eating everything in sight. I could not stop eating. Yeah, and I was like. That's what that restriction does. And I had no idea. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, what is happening right now? I have been so consistent. I never felt like dieting was a struggle or anything. I just, it was just something that I did because you like I said that tunnel vision. Yeah. But then I was just eating everything in sight, probably put on the weight. And before that I was probably about 132. Yeah. Nothing. Healthy. That's healthy. Yep. For my height. And, uh, probably put it all back on and I was just like, why did that happen? So I start researching and it was, you know, over restricting yourself and calories and over exercising, you were going to rebound and you were going to binge. And I was just like, what the fuck? So I was like struggling with that. And I'll be honest, I have been struggling with that since then. So that was 2016. So for the past five years, it's been a roller coaster of gaining weight, losing weight, extreme diets, not extreme diets, tracking, not tracking, being on a strict workout schedule, being more relaxed, doing more cardio, not doing cardio at all. There's just been so many layers of it. Yeah. And it really takes mm. your toll on you physically and mentally. Mentally, yeah. You know? And one of the things that, like, and I've never said this, like, you know, obviously, but, like, I lost my period. Yep. For five years. Was it five years? It was, it was five more years. Than that. It was 2014. It was before you moved over here. It was. It was 2014. 14. Was like, yeah. But then I got it back yeah. in 2019. Okay. So it's called amenorrhea. Yep. I think I'm saying that right. Mm-hmm. And this is, I just had to research it by myself. Yeah. Um, I lost my period and I was like, why is this happening to me? And it was because restricting, over-exercising. Yeah, and your hormones like shut down. Exactly. Everything shut down. My body was like, you're not feeding me enough. So I can't do this for you. You cannot get your menstrual cycle because I don't have enough energy to produce that. And what it took a me message from the body. To say, red flag, yeah. hang on a second, yeah. you're, you're fucking and, me up. And that's where it starts too. If you continued on that path, it would be amenorrhea, I don't know, kidney shut down, like Absolutely. organs just start yep. shutting down. My hair was so thin, my mm. nails were so brittle, yeah. I remember. Um, and it just wasn't healthy. So then I was like, it got to... It was January of 2019. I was like, okay, I'm 30 this year. Yeah. And I want kids. Yep. That's something that I've always wanted. Um, can't do that without a period. Can't do that without a period. No. Nope. And I was like, shit, I'm turning 30 this year and I haven't had my period naturally. Yes. Because the pill. Oh my gosh. And that's another thing. I went to a GP, <sighs> had all these ultrasounds. They said everything's working fine. But they so gave stupid. me the pill and oh, said, this will regulate you. This makes me so angry. And that I had no idea. This. I had no idea that it's not a real period. It yep. tricks your body into. Yep. It's a fake period. It's, it's a fake period. It's a chemical period. And I had no idea. And yep. when I found that out, I was like, no, stopped that. Because yep. I'd never been on birth control before. Right. Stopped that straight away and was like, did all this research. Yep. And I was like, how can I get this back the natural way? Yeah. And I put it off for months and months and months because I knew the answer. You Wait, didn't want to... Okay. You had to, you had to gain weight. Yeah. That was the answer. That was the only thing. Yeah. I read so many articles and so many stories yeah. of girls, fitness girls, athletes yeah. that had gone through the same thing. And they said, you have to put on weight and your body has to be in that weight for a while, for a while yeah. until your body has that energy right. to produce a period. And I was like, and you know, we're on TV once a week. So it's so scary to put I, on weight. I can't do, I can't take six months off and yeah. come back. Like any improvements that you want to do to yourself, you're doing it in front of 
the world week to week of people yeah so it's very hard and then everyone's got their opinion and they'll exactly someone will lose a bit of weight and it's like no feed this person a cheeseburger or someone puts on weight girl stop eating a cheeseburger it's like you can't win jeez you can't win but in january of 2019 i was like i need to do this i'm 30 i want to have kids yeah i don't know if this is going to affect me having kids so let me just try and do yeah. this the natural way yeah so i hired a nutritionist mm-hmm. um and we worked together on getting my calories up and kind of overcoming. I had all these fear foods and just like I was still kind of slipped back into restricting and she really helped me with that. Um, and it's it's just crazy to think, you know, all my – the beginning of my career, it was kind of like the stigma of the skinnier you were and the, the more ripped you were and the more, more jacked you were, the more successful your career was. Right. And it's just – it's funny – yeah, because I was my heaviest that I ever weighed at WrestleMania when, when we won the championships. Champions. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. I'll be honest, guys, I I put on that weight. How do you know how much you put on? So I went from I went from 133 pounds. Yep. To 148 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 15 pounds. That, I mean, that's scary. Again, that's such a healthy weight. Yeah, 148. I think for my height, it was like. They say between 130 and 160. And yeah. Because, because everyone's shape, size. Yeah. It's all yeah. different. Yeah. Um, so, like, that was kind of, like, the range. So, I was still in a, in a healthy zone. But, you know, you just see social media and yeah. you see, and no one – I didn't tell anyone that, you know, I didn't come out and post, hey, I gained 15 pounds because I wanted to get my period because yeah. I want to have kids one day. <laughs> it was. I didn't do that. Yeah. I just kind of, like, didn't talk about it. Yeah. And maybe that was a mistake because that was rough. But I was, like I said, my biggest I ever weighed. And 100% people probably thought I was just lazy and fat. But I was like, no, no, no I'm trying to like take care of myself because I have fucked my body up so much yeah. that it's taken this long. So I gained that weight from January to April. But then I had to stay at that weight yeah. from April to about July. Yeah. And then I got my period back. And even since Yay. then, I know, woo, <laughs> confetti, we reached it, we did it. So that's been like two years and my period um, over those two years has kind of gone up and down, but I can say like today it's very healthy Yeah. Um, and I'm just so glad that I did that for myself. Yeah. But like I said, no one, you never know what someone's going through <sighs> and you know, like I wasn't comfortable at that weight. Yeah. I was not, com- I had never been that, no, I'm going to say big, but I'm just saying for, like, from like my perspective, yeah. I-, I had never been that big before in my life or weighed that much. Yeah before in my life I didn't feel confident I didn't feel sexy um and it was just a tough time on on me myself mentally yeah. and um but I'm so glad I did it because I'm you know I I kind of gradually kind of lost that little excess weight floated at around 140 for a while and then when we came back um in 2020 I was kind of like 138 135 ish yeah. yeah and I feel like that's like where my body likes to sit yeah. because I'm um, when I drop below kind of like 132, yeah. my period starts to go a little bit iffy. Wow, that's so interesting. Like, and I'm, I'm glad that I know that. Yeah. Because I know now, okay, if I drop too much, wow. I'm going to have issues. Yeah, that's so crazy. Um, because I feel like you and I are so similar. Very. We're like, you're 5'8", I'm 5'7 and a half. Yeah. I feel like we Same look limbs. very similar and I feel like my body naturally sits around 130, 131. Yep. I've never had to deal with amenorrhea before. Yeah. But um, when I was younger, yeah. when we first moved here, I was 130 as well. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the older I've gotten. Oh, okay. Um, metabolism slows down a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit harder yep. to um, diet and kind of work stuff off if that makes sense it's yeah, a little bit harder to lose yeah. but not a lot but it, it's just like you, you you see it you realize it so i feel like the older i've gotten yeah um my natural kind of like body weight has just gone up a little bit which i'm fine with because yeah. like i have a healthy period now yeah. and and your like, body's working functionally and to have a family i mean that's the greatest thing yeah that's the most important thing in you life know, I, in my opinion and, and mine too yeah. and we've spoken about that before yeah. we know like you know snooks and i want to have kids yep Shout out to Snoogs. Um, go on the dirt sheets, big headline. Billy Kay wants kids. <laughs> oh, I just Snoogie. called you Billy Kay. Oh, uh, I didn't realize. Sorry. <laughs> no, Jess. that's all right. Mate, she's dead. <sighs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she always has a place in me heart. In me heart. In me heart. <laughs> Yo, BK, you little <laughs> rascal, you. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, fast forward to, to our 
release um, and, and I was sitting at that healthy 135 working with um, a new trainer and, and he was doing our nutrition, Cody. We're both using him. Cody McBroom. Cody McBroom, um, tailored nutrition. And he's been awesome because he has just a whole different take of, on everything and it's it's very organic and just like he's all about healthy habits, which I'm really trying yeah. to be good yeah. and being mindful and doing small things that can – work towards your goals yeah and not just be like healthy happy lift heavy eat well but also to make like your whole life just like cohesive and like really fulfilling yeah which i love yeah um so then we got released and i was just going ham i'll be honest i've gained five pounds i stepped on the scale and i was like all right that's fine fine, that's fine yeah i haven't had time to have six weeks of going out with snuggie to breakfast and ordering pancakes with maple syrup. I haven't done, like, there are so many things well, that... Hold on, did you have maple syrup or did you have sugar-free? I had maple. Wow, I'm so yeah. proud of you. I may, I had that, that full shit. delicious. It's so fucking good. <laughs> and and then, then we got, like, so I'm a big sweet and savory. So when we went to breakfast, we both get a savory dish and we both get a sweet dish and then oh. we switch halfway through. So we okay, try everything because okay. we yep. love to try everything. But I was like, you know, Snuggy, over the past six years, he's kind of had to be on my yeah. diet workout routine, yep. you know? So there's been a lot of times where he's sacrificed not going to dinner. Yeah. We we can't eat at this place. I need to be able to track this, so we need to eat here. And it was nice to like have that kind of six, seven weeks where I was like, babe, what do you want to do? Yeah. Because we can do it all now. Yeah. So yeah, gained a little bit of uh, five pounds, but I'm still working out, just trying to get back, like I said, to my natural uh, routine, yeah. good habits. Yeah. Just being still healthy, yeah. Um, but then also pushing myself because, like I said, we are athletes. I do like to feel like an athlete. Yeah. I do like to take pride in feel that. strong. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, shit. I want to look good in bikini. Um, and <sighs> my stomach's my one hundred percent my problem area. It's the part that I just cannot get over. I know, which is crazy because when I look at you, I see your organs. I see, <laughs> <laughs> and, and not and not like fat. It's, I see your organs. <laughs> expecting that oh, you always point to your lower stomach and I it's know. like i just but it's that one spot but i just, I just and this is this is for everyone i wish you could see yourself through my eyes or snoggy's eyes but that's, i wish i could it's, too it's and that's part of the being in the public eye too because yeah. that's 100 percent. i have body dysmorphia 100 yeah. percent. i think a lot of people in our industry male and female i have would it. say 99 percent of 100%. Everyone in WWE, and I would also say a lot of them. Maybe not 99, percent but maybe a lot of them have uh, an unhealthy relationship with food. Yeah, a bunch of them. I would whether say, that's yeah. whether that's um, restricting, whether that's clean eating too much because yeah. that's unhealthy in yeah. some instances as well. Yeah, whether like just whatever. Yeah, um, because we all want to look the best, and we we take so much pride. Mm. In well, and as well in, in, in WWE, you think like oh, the best, the better I look. Like you just said, the better I look, the bigger my push. And exactly. It's like, well, I mean, you might look good, and people might think you look good, but it really doesn't have an impact. It they they might say it has an impact. It doesn't. It really doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. You could tell me that all day long. I don't believe you. No, <laughs> you're full of shit. <laughs> you big cut liar. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of my um story. Yeah, massive rant. Um, okay. letting, letting the pork chops know what's up, but yeah. I would love to know your story now. And okay. kind of, in, okay. From this, like, where, topic, where were you feel cool. comfortable um, kind of, well, actually first, in. just, um, I want to like add on to what you just said. There's a book by, um, a lady called Dr. Jolene Brighton and the book is called beyond the pill. Okay. Um, and she's a holistic women's health doctor. Love that. Um, and it's a book that I bought myself and I, I don't have amenorrhea. I haven't yeah. been on the pill in I don't know, 10 years or something, mm-hmm. but it was just, just interesting to me. And she goes into so much depth about what the pill actually is and what it does to your body and how might be right for some people, but for most people, it's not, it's not the best option. And she just explains why in this book. I'm going to get that. Yeah. I really like to educate myself on yep. that. And I feel like we're the same where we don't like putting stuff I don't in our want body. Chemicals. I, no. I want, I want holistic, natural health. Yeah. Like, you know? and definitely as the older, like when I was yeah. younger, I wouldn't have given a shit about right. it. But the older we get, we're very on the same page. Yep. Like we hate to take like Tylenol or yeah. like, we're like, do we really need it? No. Should I just and have a gallon of water? <laughs> yeah. Should I just <laughs> go for a walk? <laughs> get some fresh air. Like, some vitamin D. Let me get some uh, hot water bottles. Just <laughs> Wait, I love hot water bottles. <laughs> Mate, I've got the, the one that goes over your shoulder. You just say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> But very 
very holistic now, so I'm definitely going to yeah. check that out. Yeah, I'm all about the organic foods where possible too. <laughs> um, okay, so my story. I knew we were going to be talking about this. Um, squ- uh, sorry, guys, the chairs are squeaky. Sorry, 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 sorry my chair's got a what are they called? Uh, Dub the forty, D Dub forty, WD forty. What's that? Oh, Snooks, what's that? WD forty. Yeah, he <laughs> goes through. What is through? Yeah, he goes yeah. <laughs> Grease that up. <laughs> um, so I feel like for me, it starts back through high school. Year mm-hmm. seven is where yeah. is my first memory of my body um, kind of being on my mind and like the way I look. And it just started because uh, I grew up prior to high school, the tall, skinny girl. I, I hadn't. Um, oh, what's that? Um, we, we're saying all these, I can't remember oh. things now. Pneumonia. I had pneumonia Oh, when I was three years old. Oh, I didn't um, know that. And I, for some reason after that, my mum told me I got very skinny and she was worried about me and wow. the doctor said it was fine. I would grow into my body, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I grew up knowing I was very skinny. Okay. And I think that unintentionally be, kind of became my identity. And I didn't know this at the time. You're when so I, young. When I look back, I yeah. realize I identified as this tall, skinny girl. Okay. So in year seven dance and the teacher was handing out dance costumes and she picked out an extra small and she was, she looked around at the group and she said, who's my skinny mini? And I was like, me, I'm the skinny one. Not realizing all the girls there were skinny Mm -hmm. and she handed it to to someone else. And I thought, why didn't she give it to me? I'm skinny. Oh my gosh. I was 12. And that, that's my first memory of my body and I didn't look at other people I didn't compare myself at that age Mm -hmm. it was just like oh I'm not the skinny one in this group and I freaking was I just this other girl was a toothpick tiny tiny same age as you yeah we were in the same class um and that's the age as well where you're just in that that awkward phase where you really haven't grown into your body yet you're a bloody (laughs) right there (laughs) just a a flat surface Just, (laughs) just a surfboard (laughs) Um, So I think that's where it started for me. So growing up as a dancer and dancers are conditioned to look a certain way. They are. But I was a ballerina. You are not going to succeed in ballet unless you are a surface, Mm -hmm. a a surfboard. (laughs) Surface. So, and then I think, so that was like through my dancing high school years. And then uh, when, same thing, when we found out we were getting our tryout, you, I don't know if you remember this, you sent me the diet um, yeah. that you were working off. And mm-hmm. I thought, perfect. This gives me something to work off as well. We did everything together. We did. We really <laughs> freaking did. But, and I'm not sure that I really understood what that kind of layout was. Yeah. So I was working in an office. So I was like, okay, I can really control what I'm eating. I was having three spinach salads a day for months. By the time I got to the tryout, this is so much information. Yeah. <laughs> By the time I got to the tryout, my poops were green. I was just shitting spinach. <laughs> Good old Popeye. That's yeah. That, that was me. Just oh it was my gosh. yeah. It was a lot. Um, and then same thing. It's like you get to WWE on this global stage, and I start looking around, and I realize I don't look athletic. I'm not the skinniest one here. I might be like in the middle kind of like whatever um but for me that wasn't good enough Mm -hmm. i saw myself i wanted for myself to be exceptional and in my head that meant being as lean and jacked as possible yep like i wanted to look like the bikini athletes 100 percent. at at their competitions i wanted to look like that at all times that is not sustainable absolutely not i did that which we'll get to (laughs) which we'll get to that shit is not sustainable at all um, and then going up to the main roster, it got even worse. And it was like, the more I wanted to be lean and jacked, the bigger I got, because it was just like this. Yeah. You put so much pressure on <sighs> so yourself. So much pressure on myself. And then I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't live with my own pressure. Yeah. And we're the same where we're happy. We eat. We're sad. Oh my gosh. We're emotional. We eat. Eaters. <laughs> Is something good happened? Great. Let's order pizza. <laughs> I'm depressed. Great. Let's order pizza. pizza. <laughs> And what's sad is that really is true. Hundred percent. We it's that's just who we are. We love food, guys. We're emotional eaters, and I really I can't wait for the day that I get to where 
food is not my every other thought. And I think I am Can't getting wait. there. Oh, good. Um, I feel like I've done, I go on and off, but yeah. I feel like I've done a lot of work, especially in this past year. So um, knowing we were going to be discussing this, I thought, okay, it's time. Time for me to come clean. Hmm. And I hope you don't get upset with me for telling you this now of on course. the podcast <laughs> and not <I'm> nervous. <laughs> privately. <laughs> I did tell my mom and my husband the other day. Yeah. I thought... It's just time. And if I'm going to share this experience and if I can help one other person, I want to do that. Yeah. My heart is beating so fast. I'm sweating. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is not something to laugh at either. But in, and you can ask me all the questions in the world. When I found out we were getting, oh God, this goes back to high school. But regardless, for five years on and off, I dealt with bulimia. Oh, my heart is like this. I just want to say I love you. I love you too. What, what five years? From 2014 when we knew we were getting signed mm -hmm. up until two years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. My heart is beating so fast. And you know what? You're fucking brave for talking about this. Thank you. Because you are going to affect people's lives. I hope so. And that's the type of person you are. You're putting yourself out there because you want to help people. Yeah, I, I, I really do. And I thought about this. I told Ronnie and I told my mum because... I, and not that you don't, I just, I, I wondered if kind of being real and raw with you now was the right thing to do yeah. for the podcast. Yeah. But I, I told them because I didn't want them to hear for the first time when they listen to the podcast. Absolutely. So this is something that you've never told Never told anyone. a soul. I, I told a counselor one time and then I ran and never went back. Yeah. Because I, I, did it's not, too confronting. I didn't want to deal with it. I wow. wasn't ready to deal with that. I didn't want the responsibility of dealing with it. Wow. I didn't want to. It's tough. But the fact that you like acknowledged it yeah and like i'm just so proud of you thank you because that takes a lot of balls you're grabbing the bull by the horns I got oh balls you got gumption <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um, so but that like so i i dealt with that from 2014 to 2019 um but uh, I didn't tell my mom this and i'm sorry mom i broke her heart last night when i told oh, her gosh. um I attempted it for years throughout high school mm -hmm. because I dealt with that dancer mentality. I tried and was unsuccessful all through high school. When we found out we were getting signed, I was like, I've got to do this. I, I, there's, I have to work out how to do this. Oh, breaks my heart. And I did. And then it just stuck with you for years. Years. Five years. Five years, on and off. And what's weird is like, if you looked back on that time, the times when I was like, lean was not the times I was dealing with it the times that right. I was a bit ch chunkier mm -hmm. or whatever that's when I was dealing yeah. with it and yeah. that also came a time where people were on the internet so vocal about the way we looked and they had their opinions and people who have big platforms would say what they they thought yeah. was you know not harmful to say at all I promise you just don't give your opinion on something no. like that, you know, because you have no idea what people are going through. None. No idea at all. And I think if you have the inclination to comment yeah. on a public forum yeah. about somebody's bo body, yeah. don't fucking do it. Yeah. It's because just... it speaks more on you. Yeah, than it does on anyone else. You're talking about. And you don't want to be a piece of shit. Yeah. And by saying that, you are a piece of shit. <laughs> and if you've said it before... And you think, wow, I'm a piece of shit. Then you are a piece of shit. <laughs> so just don't bloody comment on anyone's body. Because yeah. like you said, you don't know what people are going through. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I'm so, that's, it's just so powerful. And I just know you're going to affect so many people right now. Thank you. I, I do want to say as well, like, so throughout high school, while I was unsuccessful in my attempts, I would Google how to do this. <sighs> Um, and so I would find ways or concoctions or something to eat that would upset your stomach or something like that. And then, like, I, I know a lot of people who have dealt with anorexia, bulimia, um, those sorts of eating, eating disorders. disorders yep. um, and unknowingly, they were, they were telling me how they did it. They gave me ideas. Mm. So, so I, hate, I hate to say, like, don't talk. It's not don't talk about your experience. I would just say be selective in how... 
detailed right. you kind of go because that gave me the tools yep. for five years to do what I did. Yep. Because you're, yeah, you, you, it's kind of like you're kind of reaching out for help, but then you're seeing all these other ways you can try it yeah. and maybe it won't affect you in a negative way. Yeah. So then you try that way. Yeah. And then it's just like a domino effect. Yeah. Oh, so that was up until 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Which was my worst mental health year. And we've had length, lengthy discussions <laughs> at, at length, length. <laughs> <laughs> about that year. Yeah. Um, and it's just crazy that that was the year we won the championships, but for both of us, mentally and physically, the worst year of our lives. The highs and lows of that year. We won the titles that year at WrestleMania. Insane. I got married that year. You got year. married. That, and that, to a dream man. Yeah, that was the my <sighs> the, the best day of my whole entire life. And it's just so crazy that I was having... And no, I wasn't on my wedding day having a mental low. It was the best day of my life. But that year was just so, so high mm-hmm. and so unbelievably low. And and even having that contrast so frequently during that year, it, it fucks you up even yeah. more. Yeah. Like, shit, can we just have a nice monotone? <laughs> can we flat line? My middle ground here. <laughs> Come on, guys. Uh, oh, man. And then, so then... Uh, your bikini competition. So that was 2020, right? Yeah, that, that was, was nearly year. a year ago I started okay. that. Yeah. So I've always wanted to do um, a fitness competition. I always wanted to try and do like the bikini division, whatever. I, th- I thought those athletes looked so incredible. Yeah. And I just decided what better time than now. I gave myself three weeks to do what people do in 12 um, to get myself on stage. And I have to read. I have to reiterate that. Uh-huh. Three weeks guys people usually do a cut for 12 but they usually bulk for at least three or four months beforehand yeah. most of these like professional bikini yep. girls yep. and guys yep. spend months six months three months 12 months a yeah. whole thing yeah three weeks and that just goes to your all or nothing yes absolutely mentality yeah and that's like i when i turned it on i i turn it on yeah. which i think is probably a detriment to myself or whatever mm-hmm. I was so proud of myself during that time and when I got on stage, when you talked about like, you know, what you dropped to when you did those 50 clean days. I started, when I started this prep, I was at 125, yeah. which is which probably... Is, which is, is skinny. Which is st- skinny. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't trying at that point to no. lose weight. I was, I, I think at that time I had found a good balance. Yep. And you were in a good routine. I was in a good routine moving. and then I decided to throw all that off and <laughs> go and work for a bikini competition. <laughs> So I started at 125, and when I stepped on stage, I was 113. Which 12 pounds. You're in pretty three much weeks. five eight. So yeah. that for you, I was, I was so underweight. So we laughed at the time because I looked malnourished. Yeah, we that, we, used to, we used to call her Mal in the gym, <laughs> and yell at our PT at the time and say when she would like get in a huff for, for having to do like an extra set. I'd yell at him and go, she's malnourished. Yeah, give her a break. Throw her a bone. <laughs> She'd love a bone right now. <laughs> she would. Oh, gosh. Um, but after that competition, my gosh, I was in such a mental low. Because after that as well, I didn't take the time to reverse diet because mm-hmm. Ronnie and I went away for our wedding anniversary. Which you're not going to not do. I'm not going to track my calories on on a vacation. But I ate everything in sight. And it's... Yeah, I went to town and I I could not turn that switch back on. Yeah. Which is the the right thing that should have happened. I I don't I don't want to be turning any switches on or off. No. I really just want to find that balance. Yep. Which is so hard to find. And so hard. Everyone battles with that. Yeah. So never feel like you're alone because yeah. I, I trust me, everyone's going through the same shit. Oh, I yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but d- you you did get second and third place, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put that out there. Two trophies. <laughs> so you know, Bob's your dad. She is a winner. <laughs> Which was awesome. I was there cheering you on. Yes, you were. You looked you're absolutely beautiful, me. mate. You know, I'm in my best and my worst times. Life partner. That's what yeah. you're going to be there for. Yep. And you looked beautiful on stage. Thank I'm so you. glad I got to I like, so witness that. You did. You had fun. I'll never do it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> you worked hard. <laughs> One and done. <laughs> I looked great. Not really. I looked oh, malnourished. Malnourished. That's all right. Jeez. 
I looked like one of those horses that needed to be rescued. Because oh. <laughs> the owner wasn't taking care of them. Mate, I could see your organs. <laughs> I know, <laughs> gross. Well then, and I had reached out and said, you I've, were, you I've were been interested. I, I, I was like, let me just check on you after yeah. the, okay, the yep. comp. Because yep. I said, look, I've been through this. Oh, yeah. I was not expecting it. Where, where you rebound. Why are you... I'm tapping the table. Piano Snooks way. just gave me the little signal to uh, stop tapping. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Ruining the audio. So he's up my ass. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> but I had reached out and said, look, look, I've been through the same thing where you cut for a long – because three weeks might seem like a short time, but it was so drastic that it might have – it probably felt like yeah. six months. Yeah. So I said, look, I've been in that time where you drop a lot of weight in a short amount of time. I rebound – rebounded massively and yep. I've been struggling yep. since then. So yep. I said, if you need any help, talk to me Yeah, because I held it in for so long. Right. You did. Um, I think it was, we were on a random live event yep. and I had been talking to a counselor because I was talking, this is when I was gaining all the weight and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and I had mentioned that, you know, I, I did suffer from binge eating for, you know, since 2016 um, and she's like, who else knows? And I was like, no one. I'm so ashamed. And she's like, you need to talk, you need to talk about this to your friends and family. Yeah. So my family are kind of like beat around the bush and try to open up to them about it, but it's hard because you don't want to let them down. You, you don't want to let them down. Family. You don't want to hurt them. You don't want them to think it's their fault. That, no. And this was the thing with my mom last night. She cried and it just broke my heart because she was like, we're so far away from our families. And that hurt her that she couldn't be there for me when yeah. she, I was going through it alone. And that's yeah. what really hurt her. And as a mom, yes. she wants to help her daughter. And, and her and I are best friends. She's 100%. my best friend. And, and she couldn't understand why I couldn't lean on her. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I couldn't lean on my husband. I couldn't lean on you. On me even. I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't want to lean on anyone. Yeah. You don't want to burden anyone else. Yeah, it's it's like I just didn't want to deal with it. Yeah, and if I told someone that that gives me a responsibility to now deal with it, and I wasn't ready to. Oh, so it was kind of like out of sight, out of mind. If I don't talk about it, then it's not. It's it's. Well, there. if I told you, do you really think that you wouldn't? I would be up your ass exactly. back in the job. And I didn't want to. I didn't want and you to didn't deal want that. with that. And you needed to come to that realization on your own. Yeah, because once you start forcing someone to do something they don't want to do, yeah, it gets worse. Shit ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Um, but I had, I remember that when I told you about my binge eating, we were in a live event, uh, hotel, hotel bathroom. Uh, <laughs> it was in the bar. Remember we had worked out, we came upstairs and I was like, look, I need to tell you something. Yes. But I don't want to say it because I'll probably start crying. So I'm just going to type it out. Yeah. So I stayed in the bathroom and you <laughs> and stayed I went in out. the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sweetie. And I just wrote out what I had been. And that's the same thing. I didn't want to like, I was ashamed. I didn't yeah. want to talk about it. Yeah. But, I, and, but the second I told you and kind of opened up to my family about it. So much better. Okay. Oh, you just I, breathe. I feel the same thing. I feel yeah. a bit of weight lifted off my shoulders. Like that was my biggest secret of yeah. my life. And I let that go. You let that shit go. And thank gosh, because same thing, I want kids. Mm -hmm. And I can only imagine how my mum felt last night. If my daughter came to me and told me what I told my mum last night, it would have broken my broken heart too. Heart. And you were, when I when I would slip back into my old ways, you would always say uh, like I have a niece, you would always say, if your niece came to you and said what you just told me, what would you say? Yeah. And I go, ah, oh, fuck you, right. <laughs> well, and it just brings you back to reality. And perspective. Yeah. You know, because the bottom line is, yeah, everyone wants to look shredded and be skinny. No one else cares. No one gives a shit how much you weigh. Yeah. And at this one in our lives, our main priority is health. Yeah. Being healthy. And And the other thing as well, it's like, Let's say that is your goal to be as thin as possible, and you're dealing with an eating disorder. Or maybe I shouldn't have said that. That might this might come across blunt. Or no, well, people know your your intentions are always good. So okay. say say it. Um, if this takes over your life and you die from it, yeah, the world moves on. And so you what, don't what you're not accomplishing anything. Yep. And I know this is more than just what you eat. It's it's mental more than anything. And it reflects in your body. It does. And it messes you up more than you can imagine. Um, you know, when I was researching, because I didn't really understand binge eating, I didn't really understand that I was doing it until I like, yeah. researched it. But when like it would list like certain symptoms and I had done everything, I had stuffed myself to where I felt physically sick. And then I would 
go two days without eating. Oh, gosh. And then I would have an episode again and binge everything in sight. But then I would grab everything from the pantry and put it in the bin. Oh. And then I would go back to the bin <gasps> and pull stuff out. Oh, babe. I'm yeah. so sorry. And, and, that. and that's just like – and I was reading all these things and I was like – it was like a light switch went off. I was like, yeah. oh, my gosh, I do that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, I I suffer from this. Yeah. And then you know me. Once – once there's a problem, I need to know how to fix it. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I, you know, tried to help myself and counselor and kind of getting everything kind of back on track and hormones and stuff like that. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, getting released is, it was kind of a blessing in disguise for us. Yeah, to absolutely. On you know, so many levels. On so many levels, guys. <laughs> but we can let that shit go. Yeah. You know, just like Elsa and Frozen. Let it go. It, mate. Ah, oh, damn. Let it go. Let it go. There you go. I know the song. You do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know the song. <laughs> yeah, sing it for me. <laughs> let it go. That's all I know. Um, and, and just have that, like, be able to, like, live like a normal person because we put so much pressure on ourselves. And that doesn't mean, hey, we're still going to work hard. We're yeah. still going to push ourselves. Yeah. We still have goals. Yeah. But we're going to do it in a healthy way yeah. and nourish ourselves and not put so much pressure fucking pressure in ourselves to be perfect oh gosh because it's not gonna happen no one's perfect and if you think you are you're full of shit well actually my my mom came over to i brought her over a few years ago um to help me scout wedding venues in california and i don't know i don't know why she said this to me i i must have said something and she said to me cass you don't have to be perfect you know and i and i was like oh huh like in my mind i wasn't trying to be perfect subconsciously i absolutely was and my mom saw right through that and when she said that to me i was like oh my gosh you're so right it's such like a such a battle though it's like you're right but but i want but i want everything i'm working with people who i perceive to be perfect yeah yeah if i'm not on their level what am i exactly yeah but that's not the case at all it's the worst way to look at it and hindsight is the best yeah. You know, we can look back now at all this shit that we've been through and gone, I probably wasn't the best thing to, <laughs> to do. <laughs> if I could uh, go back and change that. We sh- probably shouldn't have eaten that out of the trash can, but that's all right. We won't do that anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. But it's just – and and it breaks my heart. Like, And I feel like the bigger social media gets and the bigger, like, you know, uh, reality and pop culture and all this cuff stuff just kind of explodes. Yeah. You know, I was reading, like, percentages – in teenagers at high school that yeah. have eating disorders yeah. that have mental struggles has like doubled and the percentages <sighs> was so creeping scary. me out yeah i had to stop reading it it's and I was, so scary you know, so I, I feel good that like and i would have never felt comfortable talking about this if i was still with WRE after oh that. me either me either. you feel like you can't because you have to be the perfect superstar perfect, and perfect and then i feel like oh people are looking at me differently yeah. and they're not they're not no one's looking at you we just put this on ourselves yeah but i'm so glad that i really hope if you're listening to this and you're going through the same things, there is light at the end of the tunnel. You've got to figure out what you want and just make sure you are healthy and get help where you need, have yep. a good support system yep. and just know that you are strong enough to yep. beat anything. Anything. And actually I want to put up a few resources for anyone who is struggling yep. with any sort of any eating disorder, any eating disorder mental, me- mental yep. Um, I'm going to, I want to put a bunch of resources in our, Absolutely. Um, like, youtube description yep. in the um in the podcast yep. um, descriptions and stuff yeah so yeah. i want to make sure that you can get the help you need yes because unlike us we just hopped on google and said what's wrong with myself oh my god we're dying <laughs> webmd told me yeah. well this is it <laughs> you got three weeks to live <laughs> so get the help that you need and you know pork chops we love you we're always here for we you we do love you um, I feel like we need to switch. Um, we need to change gear. <laughs> mate, I, I said this would be a deep episode. Yeah, it got deeper than mate, I uh, anticipated. It, we're, we're uh, above water, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are, what is this called? Treading we're water. water. <laughs> Treading. <laughs> Shit, we're going to get our head out. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought of a new fun segment. Well, you thought of it. Thank you. Yeah, you texted me, you said, look at this. And I said, mate, toot, toot. Yeah, I said. Toot uh, your horn because you're great. Pop quiz. French Revolution. <laughs> What's that from? Princess Diaries, mate. Oh, well, how'd you know that? Because you told me an hour you. ago. <laughs> I always do that. I'll say like a random quote from a movie and then say, what movie is that from? And nine out of ten times, <laughs> it's, it's either from Princess Diaries <laughs> or like Legally Blonde or The Proposal yeah. or something. It's the funniest thing. I'm like, same movie. <laughs> she doesn't know. She just guesses. I guess the same three movies. But okay. so yeah, pop, pop quiz. quiz. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. 
It's time for the pop, 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 pop quiz. Okay. Would you like to go first? Yes. How should we do this? Should we do a timer? I, I was thinking of I'm that. I'm a bit nervous how quick I can ask the questions. And then when I was figuring out these questions, there's stuff that I feel like I should know. But you know when you get that pressure and your mind goes blank? 100%. And you can't think of the answer, yes. but you know it. Yes. And then as soon as they say it, you go, duh. Yes. So it's going to be interesting. So I think no time limit. Okay. I think we just kind of quickly try and banter get to them. Okay. And if you want to skip, I yep. think that should be an option. You and we come can back, go back to it. To it. Yep. yep. Um, and then one Should thing- we do it where it's like the three strike rule, like the spelling bee? Well, I was going to say if we go through all 10 questions, but if you give a wrong answer, you can't answer it again. Oh, okay. Yeah. All and right. Like, all right. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Shout out to our good friend Matthew McConaughey. Loves the iconics. Uh, loves, well, Aww. did love the iconics. Uh, now loves Jess and Cass. <laughs> <laughs> the good friend got him on speed dial. Yeah. Maddie. You look great, mate. Uh, <laughs> Looking good. Looking good. <laughs> so, 10 questions. Yeah. Um, you're well, ready. I thought, sorry. I, yeah, no, you're ready. I, I am. My paper's unfolded <laughs> and I'm ready to fire off the questions. Okay. So, pop quiz for the first time. Uh, Miss Cassie Lee, we will start now. Okay. <laughs> so nervous. True or false? Netflix began as a DVD <laughs> rental service. False. Wrong. Oh, true. True. Who played the voice of Dory in the film Finding Ellen Dory? Ellen DeGeneres. Ding. What is the tallest breed of dog in the world? <laughs> Great Dane. Ding. <laughs> what color eyes do most humans have? Brown. Ding. Which planet is the hottest in the solar system? Mercury. Wrong. Oh, really? Which horoscope sign has a crab? Oh, fuck if I know. (laughs) A crab? What horoscope? Mm -hmm. Cancer. Ding! Is that yes? Yes. What the hell? In Legally Blonde. (laughs) What the hell? What the hell? (laughs) In Legally Blonde, what is the name of Elle's chihuahua? Oh, um. Oh. I should know this. Oh, oh, pass. Okay. In the notebook, how many children do Noah and Ellie have? Oh, five. Wrong. Oh, four. It, look, listen. Six. You get one body and it's, <laughs> it answers three. Oh. True or false? Half of the world's hazelnuts are used for Nutella. True. Wrong. Oh, gosh. Who is the oldest Kardashian <laughs> sister? Courtney. Ding. Bless your heart. How many did we get? <laughs> Snooggy's. <laughs> I just look over it. Snooggy's face is red. Like <laughs> a tomato. Dying of laughter. Gave us a thumbs up. Wait, Loves we had to quiz. come back to Legally Blonde. Sorry. The dog. Uh, yep. That was Chihuahua. Oh, um. Oh. Oh, I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Oh, it's not Bruce. <gasps> You're so close. I know. Maybe. Brutus. No. Ah. Bruiser. Bruiser. And the other one that you got wrong, the hottest planet, is Venus. Oh, but you got that. one, two, three, four, five. You got five right. Okay, 50%. Hey, that's a good bloody Sounds percentage like my right high there. Grades. Are these questions okay? Because I was nervous. Yeah, they are. Them. I was laughing okay. because I have a few of the same ones. Oh, that's but so I'm good. Just, I might uh, change them. And I love a good pop quiz and I'm very competitive, but I feel like I'm going to just bomb these and not get any right. But we'll see how we go. Look, if we get to one that you asked. Hope you get it right. Man, I've got my paper here. I'll just... All right, you're ready. Ding, okay, ding, ding. Okay, okay. Ryan Reynolds is married to who? Blake Lively. How many stars are on the American flag? Ooh, 50. Life is like a box of chocolates is from what film? Um, Forrest Gump. What is 7 p.m. in military time? Uh, 7 p.m. Oh, 1900. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Name three continents. Australia. Yes. Oh, I fucking suck at geography. Asia. Yes. Africa. Yes. Oh, fuck. Well, I am is a member of what band? Um, Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're at 100%. I'm so surprised myself right now. A group of birds is called a what? Flock. Oh. oh. How many stars are on the Australian flag? Seven. No, I oh, thought the same thing. Shit. Six. Six. Fuck, sorry, Australia. <laughs> what are the names of the parents in The Simpsons? Uh, Marge and Homer. Oh, wow. What is the fastest animal in the world? Leopard? 
No. Oh. Cheater. Ah, shit. Close. 80%. I am so proud of myself. Hot diggity dog. <laughs> Hot, Hot dog. <laughs> Hot dog got 8 out of 10. Damn. Um, they were fun questions though. Why am I so dumb? You are not dumb. I got 50%. Yeah, but I did through like like hottest planet. I wouldn't have gotten that. I would have had to guess. Man, next week's going to be harder. Okay. Okay. And I'll make yours easy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You always coming in with the words I don't know, never heard of. I know. That's why I was like, if I, I need to answer these. Yeah. So, okay. That was fun. I like the pop Very music. good. Thank you. High five. Um, lovely. Well, we're going to wrap it up with some Q&A cues. There you go. Like, oh, there you go. There you go. You will love that. <laughs> <laughs> Just dancing like a crazy person. Uh, pork chop questions. Uh if you would, <laughs> if you would I'm like, just, I'm just waiting for a like. pause so that I can edit in. Our oh, little. okay. Uh, Q and A. You ask the questions, and we give you the answers. It is time for the questions of the week, and we're back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna give those editing cues to our uh, producer and cast for the editing. Uh, <laughs> All right, stuff. All right. Okay, I'm okay, gonna move. What is the theme here for this one? It is on um, self esteem and body image. Okay, hopefully we can because bring this back up. Pork chops were struggling with stuff too, so okay. I just thought any advice that we could offer most people struggle. You know, would yep. just um, help. All right. Did you feel a negative body image towards yourself putting wrestling gear on? Oh, that was like the worst. <laughs> because here's the thing, right? We wrestle. The show starts at eight p.m., but you mm-hmm. might not be on until. 9 30 10 o'clock yeah 10 30 if you're lucky 11 yep. if you're lucky um so that's five six meals deep a gallon of water deep if i put my wrestling gear on first thing in the morning after my uh first wee exactly oh um, maybe shit happy. yeah yeah you feel great <laughs> yeah stomach's looking flat you're not bloated <laughs> great but then uh i mean at night time it's tough the and worst and if you got your period you're bloated yeah. i remember one live event i came over to you and i said Look, I'm feeling a little bit self-conscious. Can we wrestle in our shirts? And you go, oh, I'm not putting my gear on. <laughs> yeah, because when we wrestled in our shirts, when we made that decision, I didn't have to put my wrestling top on. Which was a pain in the ass. That top was a pain in the freaking butt. Oh, that so was great. That so always made me happy. Any live event where you saw us wearing t shirts was when you know we're having a bad day, guys. Gosh, okay, we'll wave through here. There you go. <laughs> Don't you touch that microphone. Oh, Snooky will get shit. <laughs> Is Cassie planning on doing any more fitness shows? Her yeah. journey was so inspiring. Oh. And I, I think that goes from looking outside and not knowing. Yeah, thank you so much for saying that. Um, no, I absolutely will not be doing another show purely for the mental health reasons. Yeah. It's not worth it. Um, and also just the negative impacts it has, has on your body and the long term effects. Not interested, my friend, no. but thank you so much. No. That really means a lot. Um, yeah, we're all about that health. All about that healthy life. Healthy, life. healthy lifestyle. We are banging out these questions. We are. Should Pumping we them out. slow it down? No. Nah. Mate, this is our longest episode yet. Yeah. Everybody better go on a Blake road trip uh, for this one. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me with it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Advice for self-esteem. I am starting high school this year and I am so nervous. So I feel like this question's fate for literally what you just spoke about. So I'm going to let you take this I, one. I, I am actually not sure where to start. What comes to your mind? What comes to my mind is everyone's going to be scared to start high school. Yes. Everyone's scared. Everyone's um, nervous that they're not going to make any friends. Everyone's nervous on if they're wearing the shoes that are in What's trend or whatever. Yeah. Um, I would say... Uh, to stick to who you are yep. and do not change for someone else mm-hmm. um, and just really talk to people and find out uh, who you have common interests yep. with and just stick with those people. Yep. And then also talk to your parents if you're having a tough time. Yes. When I was getting bullied, I had to stay home for a whole week from school. And my mum understood that because I yep. literally could not go to school because I was crying my eyes out. And yep. she understood that. Yeah. Um, and she, we were – talked about it and then when I went back I was feeling like empowered so okay. just do what you Good. have to do to take care of yourself um but I also would say put yourself out there try, yeah. try and put yourself out there because totally. you never know yeah it's a time for finding yourself and yeah. you're so young yeah so just do what makes you happy mate yeah um I would say worst case you get bullied yep 
know in your heart and your soul that means and you said this earlier in the episode this says so much more about the bully than it does you Mm -hmm. it has no reflection on who you are as a person it has everything to do with them and what Bull- they're going through. Bullies are going through things and that's why they are bullies. And I'm not saying that they are um, justified in no. what they're doing. Not at all. They should be held accountable for it. Um, and that's tough to do in school for some reason. I don't know why bullying is so hard to like control. Yeah, and kind of stop. Yeah. Um, like Jess said, know who you are. Know that you're a good person and and give that to others as well. And I feel like in hindsight, like if I, if I was able to like tell myself when I was going through that, what to say, probably don't do this because mom and dad might get shits with me. <laughs> but if someone like w- would bully me, I wish I'd go- I just laughed and said, fuck off. Yeah. I wish, yeah, I wish absolutely. I would just, I wish I had just let it roll off my back and yeah. gone, shut, shut up. Well, it's tough because bullies, they pick one person and it's constant. I had this one bully in year seven. Who, his name? I do remember his name. I'm trying to decide if I want to say it. First name. Jordan. It was a boy. Yeah. He and he, oh gosh, I was going to give you a different fact about him, but now I feel like whatever. I'll just leave it there. Okay. So um, he bullied me up the wazoo. Nah. And I didn't know what the hell why. And I thought it was because I was ugly. Ugh. That's why I thought he was bullying me. And then one day my friend Chelsea, she was in my year seven class. She was um, one of my Samoan friends. Mm-hmm. We were lining up outside of uh, class and he was just going to town on me. And I, she probably saw that I was like going into my cowering. shell. I was yep. cowering. Yeah. My friend Chelsea no. grabbed him by the backpack and threw him into the wall. Said, Leave her alone. And I'm pretty sure he stopped. He never. Yeah. So if I had just stood up for myself and, and said, thing. Leave me alone. Yep. He probably would have. Stand up for yourself, I think. Yeah. And even if that's. Go to your teacher and say, look, yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. You're not Flower. a teacher's but Mrs. No. <laughs> Mrs. Flower. Jordan's giving me the shit. <laughs> and either you sort him out and give him detention. Or I will. Or I'm going to kick him in the balls yeah. and shit's going to go down. So do what you have to do, but help me out because I don't want to deal with this shit when I come to school. You shouldn't have to deal with this You shouldn't shit. have to. No. So don't be afraid. You're not like a snitch. Just, no. You know? Yeah, like, you're not un- a thing. You're not uncool for, you know. Because protecting your peace. Bullying today is very uncool. And and it's only getting worse too. Yeah. And so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so sorry that you're nervous about that. Yeah. I was actually nervous. And this came from my brother who told me, people are going to put your head in the toilet. Oh, gosh. So here I am. Not one day. I was, I held my weed through the day for like the whole first term thinking that if I walked oh past gosh. the girl's toilet, someone was going to grab me and shove my head in the toilet. <laughs> you would pee like sussing it. <laughs> oh, lovely. But you'll get through it, mate. We all do. We're here for you. Next question. <clears throat> I'm carrying extra weight from the lockdown. How can I feel confident at the gym in a sports bra? Do you, girlfriend? Exactly. Um, I feel like 2021 and 2020, we have really tried to celebrate every shape, yes. size, color, yeah. everything. Yeah. We're embracing every single As we are. person. And that's great. Um, mate, you and the rest of the world are carrying extra weight from the lockdown. <laughs> so don't feel ashamed like about that. The only one. You yeah. know, everyone went through that. Um, so I would say you put on that damn sports bra. Yeah. And, and you, you walk into that in gym. that gym, you pick up those dumbbells. And I would even go right into the middle and give them a little shimmy. <laughs> Shake them around. <laughs> Shake you know? the booty. <laughs> and, and people are going to love you for it. Because if you have the confidence, people don't give a shit. That's exactly right. Con- and I feel like confidence is the most attractive quality somebody oh can have. Oh my gosh. I love it. Love it, love yeah. it, love it, love it, love it. So... That's my advice. And it's Go something do a that, that I, uh, if I see someone who's confident, I'm like, first of all, I'm like, good for you. Second of all, how do I get that? Exactly. <laughs> and it makes you want to be nice. Uh, I'm inspired yeah. by it. You're yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm going to go shake them as yeah, well. Yeah, imagine you know? it's just like a group of yeah. girls in the gym and their sports brush just shitting. Woo! They're proud of you their know? bodies. Tits out, mate. Tits out for the girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you not compare yourself to others body-wise? These are the hard-hitting mm-hmm. questions, my friend. Everyone does it, is what I would say. And I feel like yeah. mostly girls do it, mm-hmm. compare themselves to other women. Yes, 100%. But they look at other women like they're, the other woman is perfect. When they're not. When they're not, and they're going through their own things. And you don't know what their story is. 
Yeah. We yep. all do it. And as, as hard as it is to say, don't compare yourself to other people, yeah. you are going to. It's just yeah. a natural like human instinct, I feel like. Yeah. Um, and if you like something about someone else, admire it yeah. and compliment them. But it's not something to aim for either. No. You are your own human being. You are built perfectly the way yeah. you are. This just popped into my head. Yeah. I would suggest to anyone, if you see someone and you go, wow, I love their legs. I would take that for you. I love your legs. Thank you. (laughs) I love your stomach. (laughs) But I would, I would, I would say I love that person's legs. And then I'd look at myself and go, I love my shoulders. I would give a compliment, but then compliment yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. So then it's a tit for tat, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. When I was doing the um, fitness competition, they specific, my posing coach specifically said to me, we're going to line you up before you go on stage. Whatever you do, do not look at the girl in front of you's butt. Mm Mm-hmm. Because they're big on glutes. Oh, they're huge on glutes. And because mm-hmm. I didn't do a bulking phase, I had no glutes. Yeah. I had yeah. zilch. How yeah. the hell I got a trophy with the, those glutes? Hey. Don't know. Hey, confidence. It, it really, really, really we was confidence. We talked about it. It yep. really was confidence. Because I was, it was there. You had it. Thank you. You had it. You went I, out and you stared at that judge and you said, motherfucker, give me a trophy. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, I got very competitive. Um, Squeaky. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I really like that idea. Yeah. Compliment yourself as well. Because then you're, you're being nice to somebody else, but then you're also showing yourself love. Yeah, absolutely. Just thought of that. I'm going to do yeah. that from now on. Yeah, me too. Love your stomach. Love my legs. <laughs> love your legs. Love my stomach. <laughs> okay. I'm just starting to go to the gym. What tips do you have for getting over anxiety? This oh kind of touches gosh. base with the other one, but I would... What's that, what's that thing that they say? Gym... What's that th- word called? It's like... F- anxiety? Fear? It's like fear. Gym, gym fear. Gym induced oh. fear. There's a word that I can't think of. Um, but uh, if you're like newly going to the gym, and this is what I would say, no one is watching you. <laughs> oh, I promise you everyone's staring at themselves. Everyone is so worried about what they're doing. Yeah. And I know it might feel like that person's watching me. I promise they've just they've just brushed by you on their yeah. way to the toilet or yeah. they've looked down at you at the same time for yeah. their drink bottle. Yeah. No one is looking at you. Yeah. And once you really like get over that, it yeah. just becomes easy. You just go in there. And you have tunnel vision. Go in there, yeah. put your headphones on, yeah. do what you need to do. Yeah. And if anyone gets in your way, tell them to piss off. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I had that problem um, while I was with WWE. I remember um, Uha, uh, Apollo. I remember texting him. He was at the gym one time with me as well. He was in the free weight section and I was just doing the cardio, which mm-hmm. I didn't want to do the cardio. I had a program to do with the free weights. Yep. And I was like, I'm too scared to go in that area. I was an elite athlete on television and I was too scared to go in the free weights area. You should be intimidating other people. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he basically came and pulled my hand and took me into the free weight section with him. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh, this isn't scary. Everyone's no. just staring at themselves in the mirror. Everyone's looking at their own shoulders, biceps, but absolutely. Who cares about you? No. Um, shout out to Say Sue. Love yeah. you. Big fan, Uha Nation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's my turn. Oh, it is. Yeah. Back off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is this the last one? Uh, there was eight. Is oh, it? okay. This is yep. Sharon. One more. Okay. How do you deal with all the online hate people commenting on your looks and talent? <laughs> At this point, I laugh it off. Yes, but it took a, t- a long time to get there. Yes, yep. especially like people were nice when we were in NXT online, mm-hmm. even though we were like the bad guys. But then we got up onto the main roster and it was a whole different ball game. That was going from like primary school to high school. Yes. Um, when I talk about the bullies. Yep. Absolutely, because online bullies, we all got it. We all got the hate. Oh, my No gosh. one's happy. And I just want to – everyone's commenting about, like, our in-ring abilities and all this, and I'm sorry. You want <laughs> you want us to be the cowardly heels and put over a baby face in one minute. Hmm. <laughs> what What would you suggest yeah. that we do to show our in-ring abilities? Do that. And they want to shine the whole minute. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me just – And they want to come back. <laughs> No heat. We'll put that in the break. Oh. <laughs> That's the thing. We what were we were booked a certain way, and people forget that. Like yeah, they we, think we booked ourselves. No, mate. that's not how That's it went. Not we how didn't it have a choice in the matter. You know, we were taking what we got and just trying to do our best with it and trying to have fun with it. But I mean, you're never going to please anyone. Yeah, people are always going to have their opinions, and that goes back to saying. If you feel the need to comment on someone's career or their abilities in general, don't because no one gives a shit what you think and you're just being a piece of shit. And you probably are not enjoying your own life and don't feel fulfilled in your own life and they're 
projecting that. Exactly. And you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know that we just had three minutes get cut. And yeah, now exactly. and now we have to we've and got a promo and a match and an and aftermath. You're wondering why this part of it was awkward and that's because the referee just came over to us and completely changed the next three minutes. Exactly. And we're trying to communicate to six people out there. Like there's so much that goes into it. And yeah. I think that was the biggest thing when they say like they used to be good in NXT, but now they suck. And it's like, well <laughs> You suck. <laughs> first of all, you suck, sir. <laughs> and second of all, you've got no idea. We we we're damn professional uh, professionals. Yeah, I will say that we yeah. did a damn good job of what we were doing. Did our job. We did what was asked of us. And exactly, did it to the best of our ability. One hundred percent. So there, there you go. Put that in your in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that idiom before. Hey, hey. I, I hope that's one. Shit. Last one. Shit. You two have talked about having cosmetic procedures in the past. Has have that we? helped your confidence? Well, boobs, Botox. Yeah, okay. Um, Has it helped our confidence? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, when you got your breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've had mm. my boobs done. I mentioned that last episode. Um, it 100% helped me with confidence. I had always wanted breasts, um, and I love them, and I'm not yeah. ashamed to say that I got implants. I would never yeah, be no, ashamed to great. say that. I, You know, um, yeah. I get a lot of compliments on them. <laughs> um, snuggy likes you know? them. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then um, Botox, I never knew it was preventative against certain wrinkles. And this is stuff, if you don't feel comfortable getting Botox, don't get Botox. If you yeah. want to get Botox, get Botox. Yeah. Do whatever makes you happy. And if yeah. it helps your confidence, yep. then that's fine. No one can tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body. Yeah. I have gotten Botox and I like it. I'll probably get it maybe once or twice a year. Oh gosh, you know? must be nice. <laughs> You with your perfect yeah. face. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it, it does help, I'll be honest. But, oh, absolutely. but that doesn't mean that I don't have insecurities because yeah. I still have insecurities. Obviously. Um, and I'm sure that if I stood there and got everything done to my body that I wanted to, I would still have insecurities. It's not going to fix something. It's right. just enhancing something. Yeah. So don't think it's going to replace your feelings of yeah. being perfect and I'm like a supermodel. Yeah. No. Yeah. It just, you know, I have boobs and less wrinkles. Yeah. Awesome. I I believe if if you want to do something that makes you happy and it doesn't um it doesn't hurt anyone. Exactly. Yeah. It's your life. Do it. Do what you want to do with it. 100%. I same thing. Have had the old tit job. No tit job. There you go. Um and I had been wanting them since I was in high school. Yeah. Um so I'm glad that I did that and yeah. I copped some flack for it online when I did. Um, but I just don't care because it's not your body. It's not your life. It's not your money. No. Fine. And if you had, like, after the surgery, if someone had met you, they wouldn't have even noticed that you had implants. If they had met me, just like me. Like, if, if it was, like, like now, if someone had met you, yeah, they wouldn't even bloody know. No. So it's like, yeah. you're just, you just know this because you would tell, like, you know, it was, it was out there. Figure, yeah. You know? So do what you want. Yeah, um, I, I do want, speaking of a tit job, my dad message me i just want to get it up he's so funny uh, a lot of comments on my dad he's over yeah your dad is over. the people love him we need to get the ball he is bloody <laughs> hilarious he he makes me laugh so much um what did he say he, oh, he, gosh. Goes, he goes jesso <laughs> hey jesso <laughs> jesso just watched ep3 you've always driven either flat out or full stop uh, what? I you was know, talking about our driving last episode. And then he goes, always wear sunglasses so no one can see me crying. Aww. So he always used to wear sunglasses because he was so scared of my driving. And then he goes, <gasps> and then <laughs> tell Cass when someone flips a bird, blow him a little kiss. <laughs> he goes, that always works for me. That, that would piss him off. <laughs> Something's a bit. I'll give that one a try. Thank you. Um, so thanks, Dad. Maybe we'll have a Bob segment each week. Oh, we should. <laughs> we just about every... Random stuff he sends me. Bless his heart. Um, but yeah, wow. I feel like uh, we have come to naturally end. to the end. Um, that's a <laughs> long episode, guys. Yeah, I hope you're still with us. Yeah, and if you've fallen asleep, wake up. Yeah, and listen to the ding 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 ding. Um, woken up to hear the ending. A lot of emotional and important topics that we've spoken about. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of myself. We're Thank putting you. ourselves Thanks out you. there. I love you. Love you. Always support you, mate. Yep, thank no you. No matter what. Thanks. Here for life. Yes. You married me too. Uh, sorry, wrong dog. It's the four of us it's in this a, like, Yeah, it is. Love. Love, love square. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, 
yeah thank you guys thank you so much for joining us and see you next week take care pork chops don't forget to follow us on the socials at off her chops at cassie lee at jessica mckay and don't forget to slay your day day.